Hello, it's James from xrobots.co.uk. This is a surprising part five of my Star Wars Episode 7 BB-8 droid project. So I've done four parts, and in the fourth part I painted it to look like it does now. It's actually functional, but I said that I finished, but I decided on further thought that I'd do a part five and try and improve the performance. So let's have a look and see what we've got. So in fact what we've got is an empty polystyrene ball, which is completely hollow, and all of the clever stuff takes place in the head. So I've got uh, basically a um, accelerometer and gyro unit, which is some spark fun electronics. Have a look at the website or part one for a rundown of the parts. We've got an Arduino and a motor driver basically, and it tries to balance by staying on top of the ball, uh, which works relatively well. So I've had this uh, working through most of the episodes from part two. There's a lot of tuning gone on with the PID loops and also tried to make it radio controlled. So we've got um, additionally a radio control receiver and another Arduino, which basically tries to, um, under control, offset the gyro values to make it roll in one direction or the other. However, it's, um, it's not too bad. It only runs on carpet, really. I exhibited this at Collector Mania Milton Keynes a couple of weeks ago, and it was very well received by the public. A lot of people are interested to look inside and see how it works. Um, it does only work on the carpet, and occasionally it gets carried away and its head falls off. So it'd be really good if I could exhibit this on a smooth floor, because I had to actually take a piece of carpet with me. So we need to think about how we can improve on it. The main reason it doesn't work on a smooth floor is because the processing of that Arduino, it's only a 16 megahertz, 16 bit Arduino, it's not quite fast enough to keep up with um, the actual speed of movement, so that's why I have to take a piece of carpet. Uh, the thicker the carpet, the better, but I managed to find a piece of spare carpet in a carpet store that pretty much matched what's in my house. Um, and in part four where I showed this working, it was of course still on the piece of carpet. So there have been several suggestions along the way of um, what, what I could do to make basically make it easier. And um, some of the suggestions, of course, were to have a heavier ball, um, which would work to some degree, but obviously the idea was to have a heavy head so that that keeps inertia and keeps control and have a very lightweight ball, which is why I've used expanded polystyrene so that the head can keep control of the ball and move the ball quickly while keeping the head still. So the head keeps its inertia and the ball is easy to accelerate and decelerate. Um, the other suggestion was to put something in the ball so perhaps another heavier ball, but of course that will make the first ball or the bigger ball wobble as the little ball rolls around inside. So that makes it quite a hard control problem. And um, there've been other suggestions such as water, sand, various other things. So the problem again with water is that it sloshes around quite a lot, which will make a really strange wobble. Um, and the issue with sand is that it won't slosh around enough. So the uh, weight would stay at the bottom and it wouldn't move until you tipped it past a certain amount. Then it would all move at once and that would make an even harder control problem. Ideally, I need to increase the speed of the processing, but I've been thinking about what can I do that's the equivalent of carpet that actually slows the ball down all the time, but that I can put on the inside of the ball so I can use it on other floor surfaces. So I think it's somewhere between sand and water, but we can do some experiments today and find out. The first thing I'm gonna try is some ball bearings. So here is my development ball, which is um, still split in half and it's just held together with blue tape. If you don't do that, then basically it just falls apart, of course. And I bought a lot of ball bearings. In fact, I bought 750 10 mil ball bearings. And I put a couple of handfuls in there, so you can probably hear them moving around. Um, obviously, you can see there is quite a bit of wobble there. And it moves in quite a weird way which um, I think that's probably, I'm not sure if it's better or worse than water would be, but I can imagine water sloshing around more. So um, I think it's probably better. I'm not sure. You can definitely hear the friction between the ball bearings. So they're not sloshing, but obviously it moves to a certain point. If you move slowly, it's okay, because the ball bearings catch up, but they don't catch up completely because it still springs back, hence the wobble. So um, it's a bit of a strange effect. Obviously it moves, it means it moves quickly like this, till it moves past a certain amount, then it suddenly gets the friction. And that's what the wobble has come from. However, having tuned up the PID loop at quite some lengths in BB-8's head, I can actually make it balance. Um, it's a bit of a strange effect, and it's a lot more fun to watch than it was before.
So that's not too bad as it is. As you could see there, when I was pushing it, it took quite a lot of pushing to actually push it off center so it couldn't catch up. And you can see the fast motions where it's trying really hard to balance in the middle. And then as soon as the ball bearings take over and it goes off center, it's having a, lot, um, a much easier job to balance. So um, that's a lot more fun to exhibit. So as it is, I think that's quite good. But let's try some more ball bearings and less ball bearings. So that's all I had in there now. It was literally a couple of handfuls of ball bearings. Um, I've got a lot more. I don't know how many more, but quite a few. So um, I think it looks like about 100 or 150 in there. So um, the main thing I'm worried about is that if I add too many, then it won't ever be able to drive along. Obviously, it'd be really easy just to put concrete or something in the bottom and have it balance on the spot. But what I really want is to um, show that it can actually drive along and the ball can keep rotating. So I'm going to conservati conservatively add a few more, maybe about that many, and we'll see how that does. So I hadn't retuned the PID loop that time, I just basically put it on with the same settings. Um, although you can see it's having a much harder job of driving, so it's basically really accelerating, which is causing the oscillations, uh, not to mention the noise it makes. So let's try um, a lot less ball bearings. Well, there we go. So that's actually pretty surprising. That's working the best yet. And it's actually almost settling. And it's a lot quieter, obviously, because there's less ball bearings in it. Um, and I can give it a little shove and it can still catch up. So I might have some hope of actually making this radio control. It's actually quite stable now. And obviously it's running on a smooth floor, no carpet. So I've made a hole in my uh, ball that I used previously and I've made this little 3D printed stopper that's gonna glue in there, or at least a tube, and into that will um, be inserted a cork. And that means that, um, obviously I'll push that flush. Obviously that means I can add and remove ball bearings um, or anything else without having to untape and tape the ball up. Also this ball is slightly different because it's coated with latex, so it's slightly heavier. So I really need to tune up that code using this ball and BB-8 of course with its head on. So I've installed the hole and I've put roughly same amount of ball bearings in and it seems to work roughly okay obviously I can't tilt it all the way around because they fall out and the cork's extremely hard to get out once it's in but I do want to get rid of that noise so um, I need to basically oil the ball bearings with something now the problem is the ball is expanded polystyrene on the inside um, and most oils petroleum based oils at least will eat through the polystyrene eventually I thought about vegetable oil um, but that will eventually congeal and kind of dry out if it's exposed to oxygen, even though the ball is sealed. The other thing that struck me I could use would perhaps be shampoo, but of course it's water-based, and although the ball bearings are stainless steel, they are stainless steel, not stain-proof seal, so they will eventually corrode. So the um, only answer I came up with is pure silicon oil, which is designed for treadmills. I managed to buy one litre for not too much money on eBay, you can buy less. Um, and apparently that won't eat polystyrene, as far as we know. So, um, however, it's quite funny stuff, silicon oil, so it's going to make a, make a mess if I spill it. It's also going to be extremely hard to clean up. 
So um, I'm going to have to be extremely careful to get it through that hole without coating the hole because of course then it will be very hard to seal the hole with anything ever. So um, there's already some residue on the outside of the bottle and I only need the tiniest amount to uh, take the noise away. Of course it will eventually coat the ball so there'll be less on the ball bearings and I don't know what the results are going to be but um, obviously I can't risk the ball rotating and this spilling out and coating the hole because I never be able to seal it so I have to basically guess how much to put in seal the ball and then do the rest in software hopefully to tune up that pid loop to make it balanced still so I've just put a small quantity in the cap oh that's extremely hard to pour lucky I did that with the cap and didn't get any on the hole, great right we need um, a funnel ideally although I don't have one to hand unfortunately right let's try this All right. Well, I think that's quieter, but they don't seem to move quite as quick, so it seems um, a lot slower, which could be good. I haven't, I don't know if I've coated them all really, and I obviously haven't coated the inside of the ball. So I think I'm going to put quite a bit more in and then seal it and hope for the best. I've sealed the ball up and I did that by sticking the cork in, painting it black with a marker and then putting liquid latex over it so that's nice and sealed. At some point I'll seal the whole ball in Plasti Dip to make it a bit harder wearing but for now I'm keeping the latex so I can paint it up a bit more, put some of the details on and do some more weathering. So we've got the silicon oil in the ball bearings in and um, it's not too bad, it's still a bit noisy. But essentially it pretty much stays where I put it, there's still a little bit of wobble, obviously it moves faster in the middle but it's actually not too bad, I think we've got rid of some of that wobble and um, having spent some time tuning up the PID loop I can actually tell you it works quite well. So there we go, it, I think it's moving slightly more than it was on carpet uh, but on the whole I'm fairly happy with that for a smooth floor. You can hear the ball bearings in there, but it's actually quite stable. I can um, give this some quite big shoves and it still corrects and dampens relatively quickly. So have a look back on the previous episodes to see the coding, but all I've really done is given it slightly more gain. So there we go, and that's for the uh, proportional part of the PID loop. The other values are pretty much the same. Oh, hey. So pretty good for a smooth floor and it also works with this head on. So pretty happy I can demo this. Um, at shows and things, it's pretty stable, probably more than it was in fact. I can tell it to go where I want to. And the other thing that's really good is the remote controller started working. So I had the radio controller before, um, which was extremely temperamental, and that just adds some values to the gyro. And now I can actually drive it, so um, if I push on the right hand stick here, we should be able to see it dipping to the right driving towards me, if I go left, it will go that way, should be going left, Just put his head on straight, and uh, obviously forwards and backwards works relatively well as well. It likes uh, a bit of time to catch up sometimes.
So that really is the end of this project now. You may see little bits of painting and stuff done to it when I exhibit it at shows. The next one is coming up on August the 8th in Southampton. Have a look at nerdageddon.net. It's actually a specific Star Wars event which I'll be at with both my droids. And so make it the Southampton Makerspace. So don't forget to subscribe to my channel and check back for more updates on the other projects. And also check out my social media links in the description to this video.